Welcome to the Republic of Me. My name is Ivana and this is a channel where I share my creative journey and some parts of my life living on an island in the Mediterranean. Hey, I thought that it's going to be too, too hot for me to wear this jumper today when I record. And by all rights, it should be because it started getting uh, warmer already a couple of months ago here. But uh, somehow today, it's a lovely day, but it's windy and it was even raining this morning. And not that the weather really justifies wool, wool jumper, but uh, I knew that I'm not going to be too hot in it. So I thought I might as well put it on so I can show it to you later on. But yeah, it has, uh, it has been uh, getting warm, um, which is typical for Cyprus, obviously. Uh, and I watch, because you know I like gardening, and I watch, um, I like to watch channels on YouTube that, uh, gard not only gardening channels, but uh, even uh, people who have vlogs that actually like gardening and do gardening. And I see that most of the places in the northern hemisphere they're just starting to kind of like uh, make seedlings to to germinate the seeds so they can plant their first crop after the the last frost and here for us it's already coming to uh, end of a growing season for some of the things like my brassicas, my lettuce and my radishes and uh, they're already bolting that I need to start uh, pulling them out and uh, it's the end of the growing season and now I have to plan what I'm going to plant for, uh, for Cyprus uh, summer for the hot weather. But I found that strange because like just as the rest of the northern hemisphere is starting it's getting ready to start planting the stuff um, ours is already bolting and i need to start uh, pulling it out but we did we did the harvest uh, we've been harvesting uh, vegetables for the past couple of months and throughout the winter i had all the greens that i need for the salad which is really nice i love going out in the garden and just uh, picking my own greens and we've been harvesting uh, lots of beetroot and I still have more. Radishes that I planted, they didn't do so very well, but um, that's okay. But we got a lot of beetroots. We got this other vegetable, how is it called? Um, kolarabi. In Serbian, we call it kelaraba. Um, and in Greek, it's kurvola or kolumbra. Um, but uh, it's it looks like a beetroot but it's white um, a bit bigger so we have harvested that as well and uh, and earlier this year we have also harvested sweet potato we didn't have such a large crop as last year because one of the raised beds um, our animals dug it up so uh, we only harvested from one of the raised beds but we we got uh, sweet potato harvest as well she said I won't be back in a while Don't wait Already packed her bags Called the cab Made space And she said I won't answer If you call me when you're lonely I guess I'll let her go Never mind It's too late But I can't believe I let you slip I think about it seven days a week And this just can't be how it's supposed to end up It's not enough Just let you go away Like my friends think I should Cause what if I just wanna be with you I don't know what the hell I'm gonna do But honestly I can't remember If you love me Or maybe I'm just feeling lonely I don't know Just let it go She got herself a guy And he's good No, he's great Everything she wanted packed behind the pretty face But I kinda hope he breaks her heart into little pieces And let me pick them 
all back up and put them back together But I can't believe I let you slip I think about it seven days a week and this just can't be how it's supposed to end up Cause what if you should really be with me? I wonder what the hell you didn't see But honestly I can't remember if I loved you But it feels like I did when I think about you now So I wanted to show you this um, this jumper that I have knitted um, recently. I think I finished it a couple of weeks ago and I just uh, never got a chance to show you. If you remember from a few videos ago, I bought, uh, I wanted to try uh, Cascade yarn, Cascade 220. And uh, I have knitted uh, with Cascade Heritage for my socks. But I wanted to try the uh, Cascade 220 because I heard a lot of good things about it. And I ordered uh, two colors, this green one and one um, like uh, wine burgundy color as well, 400 grams of each. And I wanted to try it and I did so in this uh, jumper. Um, I must say I was very happy with the yarn. But let me first show you the jumper. Um, I told you also that I'm trying to make a recipe for these uh, raglan uh, jumpers that I make. So this was done according to this recipe and I'm making some other ones as well in different, uh, in different weight yarns. So I can just double check the numbers that they are working for different weights. So this was done in um, using that recipe. But in order to kind of create a bit of interest, what I did in this case is I created this ribbing along the sleeves that uh, kind of continued from the turtleneck here. And uh, I really like it. I, I really like it. The sleeves are tight, not tight uh, as far as I'm feeling it, but uh, they kind of follow the shape of my arm, which I like. Um, I have some other ones with wider sleeves, but for this uh, for this particular jumper, I like it. I'm not really sure how the green uh, looks on me. I don't really wear green clothes, although I thought it might look nice because of my eyes. Um, but it's okay. It's not the greatest. I like how red uh, looked better on me. So the other, so the other uh, wine-colored Cascade uh, 220 is going to, I think, look nicer. But it's still nice. I like it. And I have some other uh, green handspun that I made that I also want to knit for. But that's a bit uh, darker. I really do like this color. I like the fact that it's heathered. I love heathered colors. No, those are my favorite because it just adds depth. To, to, to any project and not just solid, uh, solid color. So, okay, let me see if you can... I made it, I don't know, this length. I didn't really try it on that much. Normally, I kind of, uh, from the underarm to until where I start doing ribbing, I usually like uh, knit 30 centimeters, which is I think 12 inches, and then I start the ribbing. So that kind of works for me. Maybe I could have done it a bit longer, but uh, it's fine. And, uh, you know, to tuck it in uh, also in the jeans like that. Um, what else is to say about this? Yes, the yarn. I was 
very happy with the yarn. Um, the it comes in uh, oh my god it comes in so many different colors and for this particular color I'll put uh, I'll put the link uh, to the yarn and uh, the color weight that I used sorry <coughs> talking about links sorry before I continued I saw that a lot of my links have been lost from the previous uh, videos in the ch channels uh, in the in the videos that I have made that I said I'm going to link this here and there because I tried to make a bulk edit in the description of uh, of the videos and it just deleted pretty much most of the links. So I'm sorry about that. I don't know what I'm going to do. Whether am I, am I going to go one by one video and check what links I was supposed to put and then put them again or just leave it and, uh, you know, and continue from now on. But if you are watching some of the older videos and if I say that I have linked something and you don't find the link, I'm really sorry about that. I'll see if I can fix it, but I'm not sure. It would just take too much work. So I will link, uh, I will link this uh, yarn where I bought it from and, uh, and the colorway as well for you to, to if you want to buy the same one. I was very happy with uh, yarn because I didn't expect that I was going to be because when I touched it it wasn't you know like kitten soft not even close it's actually quite crunchy even now when I wear it but somehow it's not prickly at all it's not itchy at all and I am quite sensitive so even though it's not extremely soft like some of my my other ones like some of my hand spun or, uh, or the one that I really like that is really soft is Wool and the Gang Sugar Baby Alpaca. Um, but uh, this one, by right, I thought it might be prickly or itchy and it's not at all, even now when it's not uh, too cold and I don't feel it itchy at all, at all. It's actually a pleasure to wear. It's sturdy and um, I feel it a bit, like a little bit dry there is this quality of woolly wool, but not rustic. I'm explaining to you, and you probably used it many times because I think I'm the last person to have tried uh, Tuskate 220. But I like it, and it comes in so many different colors, so I'm sure that I'm going to be ordering uh, more. The yarn comes in uh, 100 gram skeins and I think each 100 gram skein is 200 meters. The needle that they suggest is four and a half millimeter however for this I have used five millimeter and I'm not really a tight knitter uh, it's just I saw that the fabric uh, can lend itself to five millimeter and I think I can even go um, up more as well to five and a half maybe even six I have to try it if I want because even with five millimeter which is higher than what suggests it's not very um, flowy drapey uh, it's not sturdy but it's not um, oh I don't know what's the word but let's go with sturdy so uh, it's just not it's not too drapey with this uh, gauge so I think that if I wanted the more drapey fabric I could go up even more so I might experiment that with the wine colored one that I have and and play with it and uh, see but the selection of colors oh my god it's like a kid in a candy store um, I don't think I'm gonna be able to wear this jumper anytime until the, the winter comes or late autumn but I'm happy I made it and uh, um, and now also I'm happy that I was able to try it on before it gets too hot so you guys can see it. I'm happy with it and I really like this detail. It just adds something. It's a, it's a twisted uh, rib, the same that I did on the neck. And then I just chose like a small panel in the sleeve and continued it from the neck all the way down to the arm and continuing into the ribbing of the sleeve as well. <laughs> this is very awkward. I should have just kneeled, knelt down. You see it? 
Okay, so since I liked Cascade 220 this much, I do have Cascade 220 fingering and I have a lot of it in different colors. And I have never knitted with it on its own. I have knitted it, uh, used it once last year when I made the jumper for Mario. I held it together, so that's Cascade 220 fingering. I held it together with Drops Flora when I made uh, Mario's jumper. Uh, and um, I will put the name of the jumper now. Um, it's one of the rare patterns that I followed and it uh, it fit per it fit lovely it fit perfectly i will also put the picture of mario wearing it i i caught him by surprise one time because he would never model for me so i just uh, i snapped the photo a couple of months ago during the winter when we were at his mom's house so it fits great but uh for that pattern um I think the neckline was a bit too wide, so maybe next time I'll see how I can make it a bit uh, higher up for him because I really do like that model, the jumper, <clears throat> that pattern. And it was easy to follow, which usually for me patterns are not. So yeah, I have worked with Cascade 220 fingering only that time when I held it together with the uh, Drops Flora, but I couldn't really get the feel of the yarn that much because I was holding it with another yarn. I did swatch, I did swatch uh, a few months ago on two and a half millimeter needles and the fabric came out beautiful. Now the fabric, even though the Cascade 220 fingering is light fingering weight, it's 250 meters, I think, per 50 grams. So that's like 500 meters per 100 grams. It's, it kind of fluffs up when, when you wash it and block it because it's not perfectly smooth yarn, which I like. Sorry again, something is tickling me in my throat. <coughs> and uh, normally, because I'm not a tight knitter for a yarn that uh, of that yardage I would need to use smaller needles but I have used two and a half and the fabric created is quite dense it's not thick but there are no gaps so I thought that maybe I could go even to three millimeter needles and I wanted to make a jumper out of it again testing uh, the recipe that um, that I'm making for you guys. Um, I wanted a lightweight jumper because sometime next month we are taking my parents uh, for a two week uh, cruise uh, around Mediterranean. And I wanted to have a lightweight jumper that to have, I mean, it really shouldn't be hot because I mean, it's May and uh, second part of May and uh, it's around Mediterranean, but you never know, you know, being on the sea. And so I wanted to have a jumper with me as well, but something lightweight. And I started knitting with it. Uh, the color that I chose is simply the one that I had the most of. I will link that one as well in the description. That was not very elegant, was it? The jump. So I'm working on it. I've been working on it for a couple of weeks. Uh, using three millimeter needles. Okay, I'm on the... How will you see this now? I'm on the second sleeve. And it's also a raglan jumper. It's a high, it's a high neckline, but it's not a turtleneck. It comes right up to here. And I will show it to you more in the next, uh, in the next video once I finish, because I, I should be finished any day now. I'm on my second sleeve. And once I wash it and block it, so the fabric uh, gets, it gets the real, um, it's real form. I'm losing my words today. I don't know how, um, but that I have to compose myself and get the words. 
Okay, no, I still didn't get the words, but um, when I wash it and block it and the fabric kind of uh, comes to its state that it's going to be later on that it fluffs up and just evens out all the stitches. But this is how it looks for now. I can't tell you on top of my head what is uh, the colorway. Uh, I, I will write it down. Um, but it's, it's the one that I had most of. So based on this, that this was not scratchy I thought, uh, and uh, prickly to me, then I thought I'll make, uh, I'll make completely out of the f uh, cascade to 20 fingering as well and try it out. So hopefully I'm going to be able to wear it on bare skin because this one I am. I don't have any t-shirt underneath. Um, okay, so that would be that for knitting and um, hopefully this will be done for the next video and hopefully it will be done for the cruise. It's, there is no reason why it shouldn't. I think I'm going to finish it in the next couple of days. But I wanted to answer because uh, over through different videos I get different uh, questions and I started like uh, dressing one or two questions every video and then I didn't in the last few. So I wanted to answer one question and it's unrelated to, it's not related to, to knitting or fiber arts, it's about painting. I have shown you some of my paintings in a few videos, uh, not that many. I'm starting to get uh, the itch to paint again so maybe there will be a bit more of uh, that in the upcoming videos. But I was asked about the, this painting because this painting uh, is in my studio upstairs and it's... See, I'm sorry because I don't know now where is it focusing. Is it focusing on my face or her face? So if I'm blurred or if she's blurred, sorry, let me put it closer. So this painting uh, is upstairs in my studio and it was behind me when I record. And somebody asked me to tell the story behind it because in the first episode I spoke uh, about, you know, the reference photo and the story behind uh, the other black and white painting that I did uh, of the two kids. There is no story. Um, and as with most of my paintings, as unromantic, non-romantic as that sounds, I don't have uh, meaning behind my paintings. And to tell you the reason why as much as knitting and spinning relaxes me. Painting has, I can't say the opposite effect on me, but it doesn't relax me. If In fact, it takes a lot out of me. And there is something that when I'm faced with a blank canvas or piece of wood, like in this case, because my favorite uh, surface to paint on, especially with oil, is wood. And uh, when I'm faced with a blank canvas or a piece of wood, there is this, there is this anxiety that I don't know where it comes from. And it's like staring into abyss. And when I finish a painting, it takes a lot out of me. So I enjoy doing it, but it's not, it doesn't calm me down or relax me like fiber arts do. And why? I don't know. I, I have no idea. So to assign meaning to my paintings, it would just be it would just be too much for me, especially because I already have that kind of um, little bit of an earthquake going on inside before I start the painting. And 
in the summer I showed you the painting that I was working for for my auntie who has passed away and uh, and I wanted to finish it and that that's that's another example I've been fighting with that painting for months and working on it and working on it and working on it and just couldn't get it right I couldn't get it right and I assigned there was this meaning to the painting because that painting was going to be for my auntie while she was in the hospital and then she passed away and and I stopped working on it so I thought you know the painting had such meaning that I need to get it perfect and it's been a battle that I had for months until a moment came that the painting's still not right I still don't like it but the painting as the end result lost the meaning that I thought that it was going to have I thought the painting was the point but it wasn't it was that battle and while I was fighting it while I was fighting the painting I was letting go of my I was letting go of my auntie and it came as a surprise to me um, but now when I look at the painting it's a shell so what I thought that the end result the actual physical product is the point was actually not the point at all it was the battle that I had and not getting it right and now the painting I could keep it I could work with it I could throw it it doesn't really matter it's it's the painting itself doesn't have the meaning anymore which is very very interesting um, the point was that journey of me painting so that's just you know a personal uh, story but I do tend to have journeys not as dramatic through each painting as well and it's like facing something that I don't even know what it is but um, I read somewhere and I cannot tell you where it was some artist wrote it that when they're faced with black canvas it's like they're faced um, with a mirror I don't know if it's mirror to their soul or something like that they said but it does uh, my phone sorry okay so well there was Mario calling me to uh, to make uh, rice for lunch so completely disrupted my train of thought so I'm gonna finish here but um, yeah that's it this painting and other paintings as well apart this one for my auntie they don't really have the meaning and I don't even want to start attaching the meaning to them because simply it's too hard it's hard as it is not technically but emotionally for some reason um, if you paint and if you have a similar experience let me know please because I never came to the bottom of it but that that's how it is I love to paint but it does it does take a lot out of me so um, here you can see another paint the painting again before I take it upstairs but I'll move my face uh, from the from the shot so it doesn't focus on me for a second okay so I hope you like it and um, I'll see you soon. Bye for now.